All right, I'm just going to say up front, this is going to be a mess because I didn't plan to do this. I mean, I don't really plan to do a lot of this stuff. Uh, I had an author interview this morning, and apparently they're having like a snowstorm or something in Canada. So we had to delay that. So I just said, hey, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and talk about this crazy little book right here. And look, I'm already off topic, so uh, this isn't going to bode well. But let's do it anyway. Let's talk some Gardens of the Moon, part one. Hey, what's up, bookworms and bridge burners? We're here to talk a little Malazan. Now, guys, look, this is something I didn't plan to do. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to make this a permanent thing. Uh, I'm about the 50% mark through book number one. That's parts uh, book one, two, and three, as they put. If you don't know, it has uh, separated by books. Uh, but uh, I just want, I wanted to make this kind of be like my thoughts and feelings pretty much about part one. Because if I try to do like a spoiler, I wasn't going to do spoiler talk videos for this. It, it was like I, I did the whole vlog thing for Rhythm of War, and I felt like it was kind of a lukewarm reaction. To that, so I was like, I don't want to kind of overflow the Malazan content, but as we're still getting kind of settled in here, I don't think it could hurt really. So I said, Why not? Uh, but here's the thing spoiler talks are usually gonna be a little more structured than this. Like I said, I just kind of just plan to do this like spur of the moment. Uh, I was just gonna do like a non spoiler thing, but I said, I'm gonna do uh, spoilers. So what I am gonna do here is this is gonna be for books one, two, and three within this book that is uh, Pale, Darujistan, and The Mission. So as long as you've read those three, you're going to be fine. Uh, I haven't even started book four yet. Like I said, it's almost exactly at the 50% mark in this book. So I thought it was a good idea instead of trying to cram all this into one spoiler talk at the end or the one that I'm going to have with Iskar Jirak later on this month. But if you're looking for my non-spoiler thoughts, that review will be up Monday, January the 25th. So wait until then if you don't want to be spoiled. If you're joining this read along, and a lot of you are, uh, I think that you're probably either here or you will be here very soon or you're already past me. But I want to get these thoughts down before I continue. Now, I would appreciate if a lot of you uh, veterans do not answer my rhetorical questions here. If you don't know, you're just finding the channel. Look, this is my first time reading the series. So please don't spoil anything for me for the rest of this book, for the rest of the series, anything, especially not in the comments, because there will be a lot of first time readers jumping in. And I know that you guys, you veterans, really, really want new people to read this series. So uh, spoiling the series for them might not be a good idea, and especially not for me since it's two years of my planning on this channel. So I would appreciate if you just kind of, uh, you know, just sit back, eat the popcorn, and call me a sweet summer child a lot. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. And let's go ahead and, and move along here. Look, uh, my initial thoughts is I'm quite enjoying it. And that's really surprising to me because a lot of people had set up these expectations that this book was going to kind of be a nightmare. What the palette here. Oh, look, I, I, I guess I'm kind of the point where I don't really understand the divisiveness of this book because I'm enjoying the hell out of it. It's, it's one of those things like I think, um, do you have to pay attention? Yeah. Do you have to do that with almost all the epic fantasy? Yeah. Yeah. I don't see why it's just so different here. I, I think the the whole fear mongering about this has come about from people who have only read traditional fantasy and they start at the beginning, you know, farm boy, farm girl leaves home, that kind of story. And I think that this is not that. This is something totally different. So I think if you go into this expecting that, and if you've read something like A Wheel of Time, you've read something like A Stormlight Archive, I think you're going to be fine. It's just, you know, there isn't really a set protagonist antagonist in this. It's, uh, I, I really, I really like the way that he set it up to be, look, there are bad things going on. And there's some good people who work for those nations that are doing bad things. I mean, right away, you're introduced to these bridge burners, which I think you kind of really latch onto really quick. You like them, and you realize, yeah, but you know what? They're kind of working for this empire that has been started by being overthrown by someone and is now conquering the last two free cities on this continent. So it's one of those things where you're like, hmm, you know, I sometimes... Uh, good people work for bad bad companies, right? That's the way I kind of look at it. But uh, yeah, I, I think that that's why a lot of people are kind of rough on it at first is they just think, okay, look, you're dropped right in the middle of it. You're not starting at like the beginning before everything explodes. This stuff is already going on. I mean, this book really has a, a, a book five kind of level battle <laughs> in the second chapter of this book, which I'll get to in just a second here. But uh, yeah, not having those protagonists, not having that antagonist right off the bat, I think it could be jarring for new readers. But look, 
I think as long as, uh, at least for me, what I did is I went into, I was like, I'm treating these books like anthology books. That's why I'm, with the, with each of the, the the sequels, I'm not expecting the uh, the whole, hey, I really started to like these characters, and now book two is different characters. Oh, God, what am I going to do? Uh, I knew this going in. So uh, I've expected to kind of just be, you're going to be dumped a lot of information up front, and you just got to understand you're not going to understand everything. And I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Believe it or not, I am perfectly okay with that. But again, if you've read something a little more serious, I, I think you'll be fine with this. Now, if you're if your first time fantasy reader, this probably would not be the place to start. It would be a little a little rough, I think. But um, yeah, being dropped in with no context whatsoever uh, has been tough for people. But I think that support group that we've had on the Discord has helped a lot of people get through that. Because from what I've seen, it's been overwhelmingly positive, at least of the people that are talking so far. Uh, I definitely see the Frank Herbert's Dune kind of uh, structure here. And you guys know I'm about that action so uh yeah yeah so if you understand that this isn't being told in your traditional fantasy way you know starting small and gradually getting bigger i think you're going to be fine but let's go ahead and talk about some of my favorite parts so far like i said these will be more structured in the future i'll talk about you know particular characters and stuff this is just kind of be all over the place because right now my thoughts about this book are all over the place and that's why i wanted to uh to get these on video look with me it's like the prologue pretty cool Chapter one, yeah, this isn't bad. Chapter two, holy shit, this is amazing. It was really a book ending level battle in the second chapter of this. And I just could not believe how epic in scope this is. I mean, not only do you have like a floating moon fortress city thing battling this giant city and all these mages and magic and shit going everywhere. It is absolutely bananas, but it's written really well. You know, everybody tells me that his writing gets better as it goes along. Well, that's that's awesome to hear because dude can write some action. It's like, I wouldn't say that the action happens a lot besides for chapter two here at the beginning, but man, this is, like I said, this is, this is most trilogy fantasy series out there. This is the end of their third book. This is huge and it has incredible implications. And I just, I was not expecting this off the bat, but again, that structure might be a little weird to people because it's like you pick up that chapter and you're like, okay, uh, the battle's over. There's this dude cut in half and we're like, what's going on? And then it, within that same chapter, you flash back to about two hours before when that battle began and you see how we got to where we are. So I can see that I could throw some people. And, and I do think there's some times where it's like, it, you did just you didn't even like have like a chapter break. You just kind of just went back into telling that story. So I can see how people be confused. Pay attention to the dates, guys, because I didn't even know at first that uh, the, the prologue and chapter two were like years after. We're, we're sorry, prologue and chapter one was like two years, or maybe no, it was seven years. I think it was seven years. And then from chapter one to chapter two was like two years. Then chapter two to three is like three. You just gotta pay attention to those dates if they have them. So don't skip those little epigraphs, those poems, and especially not the dates if you want to feed. A lot of nice little tidbits there. But I'm paying attention to this more than I would usually a standard fantasy book. But look, I immediately latched onto the bridge burners. Um, I think a lot of those expectations, that's one of the things that I had heard before was how much everybody loved bridge burners. So that, that, that kind of, I don't want to say that influenced me, but I can see why people like them. Like right away, Whiskey Jack seems like the kind of dude that you would follow. Uh, Quick Ben and Kalam are just two guys that I'm really just intrigued with. And that's like the uh, the buddy cop spinoff that I need to see here. I, I really love anytime those two are interacting with each other. But I, I love all of them. Uh, obviously, Tattersail is in the early running for one of my favorite characters in the series. <laughs> I love it kind of a... Uh, it's kind of reversing that standard fantasy trope of every single sorceress or mage has to be like just a smoke show hot. And just all the time talks about like how she, you know, she's pretty, but you know, she's thick. And I just think that that's such a great little spin there. And it's, it's, it's one of those things I've seen some people complain like, does he got to tell me this like every time? I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. It's giving these characters, they don't feel like carbon copies of everything that's come before. All these characters feel different. And I was worried about this. I was worried with this number of characters that a lot of them were just going to be like blank avatars and you're just going to kind of forget. I feel like through chapter, uh, the through book one in this, I feel like all these characters feel very distinct and different. I don't ever have a problem being like, wait, who, which one was this again? You know, some of the things, like some of the military terms, like second army, ninth division, stuff like that, that'll, that'll get you at first, you know, hearing about the cadre, the different kind of, uh, you know, mages and things like that, and the rank within the, the empire. But, uh, I, again, it doesn't change anything. If you're not getting that, it's not going to ruin the story for you. And I think that's something you're going to get 
over time. So yes, very, very, if you've never really read a military book before, I think it could probably be like, what is happening right now? But uh, again, I, I don't think it's anything that's going to penalize you if you're not getting it. And I think that's what's going to make this series great, is you're going to get that information as you go along. The best thing is, guys, this series is complete. So you ain't got to worry, uh, did he stick the landing or not? Because everyone tells you, yes, he stuck the landing. When it comes to Ganos, is it Perron or Perrin? A lot of people are saying Ganos Perrin, and I'm like, I don't want to say Perrin, because all that makes me think about is Wheel of Time, and then all I'm going to start saying is nothing matters but Fayul. And I don't want to do that. So I want to give this guy a fair shake here. And I love Perrin, don't get me wrong. Uh, so I'm saying Ganos Perron. Eh, you know what? You are gonna guys are going to have to just deal with this pronunciations because I don't audiobook and I'm going to say these things wrong a lot, especially early. So please don't let it bother you. But I, I think the, the big shocker right away was like, okay, did this dude just get offed? I was like, holy Abercrombie, that is dark. But then it does something even cooler. It does like this afterlife where they're talking about him replacing somebody. Such cool stuff. And no, I don't get any of it, what's going on. And I'm fine with it. Uh, the, what, Hood's, Hood's Gate or whatever, just being like made out of like dead body. That is just some creepy, creepy, spooky stuff. And I'm digging it. You know, and I wouldn't say that this is just grimdark. Uh, a lot of people say, well, is it kind of grimdark? You know, I don't think it's grimdark. But I think it's very adult. Uh, it's violent. It has some disturbing imagery. Doesn't have a lot of bad language. Uh, it's had a couple of sex scenes, but you haven't really like seen anything. Really, it's just Tattersail. Like I kind of joked, I was like, Tattersail is the only one getting lucky in this book. In fact, I'm going to start calling her Tatter Tail. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but I got to say that, uh, yeah, Erickson is just merciless. Uh, you sure, you think, okay, he just killed Ganos. Oh, no, he didn't. He's coming back. It's got a little twist to it. Still kind of wait to see what's happening with that. But uh, then you're like, okay, well, maybe he's not that kind of author. Okay, all right, so death isn't a big deal here. Then you're introduced in book two to this character called Tallow. And Erickson's like, hey, here's a little bit more uh, information about Tallow. And you're like, as the reader, like, hey, I'm kind of liking this Tallow guy. And then Erickson's like, ha you stupid son of a bitch, and he kills him. So it's like, wow, you really just introduced this character. It kind of made me think of It by Stephen King, where he spends, not quite that much, but It by Stephen King, where he, he spends at least 10 to 15 pages telling you all of everything about Stanley Yurz's life just to kill him like a couple pages later. Sorry, there's like a 35, 40 year old uh, spoiler there if you guys haven't read it. And I gotta say, I kind of mentioned it briefly, Moonspawn and Anamander Rake has got to be some of the coolest shit that I have seen in epic fantasy so far. Seeing Moonspawn was like the first moment where I was like, I don't think I could ever see this being adapted to a visual medium. I don't see this ever being on a streaming service because it would be too expensive. I don't ever see it being on a movie screen because uh, there's no way they could do this stuff in two hours. So, uh, yeah, I can see... You hear a lot of times of fantasy, oh, it's unfilmable. And after Lord of the Rings, a lot of people started saying a lot more epic fantasy. You could see that it was filmable. You know what? We've had a lot of misses since Lord of the Rings. Let's be honest here. That's why I'm not optimistic about Wheel of Time, but I digress again. Here's my deal with this. This is humongous in scope. I hear people all the time use it. Oh yeah, that series is so epic in scope. And then you read it. It's like, actually, you know what? I never really thought A Song of Ice and Fire was epic in scope besides like dragons. But I was like, that's not something that's like impossible to do. This, the visual imagery for this would be billions of dollars to, to create. And uh, I would love to see it. Maybe it happened in my lifetime. I don't know. But uh, yeah, uh, this definitely seems like it would be better suited as like an animation. But I would love to see an adaptation. That's all I thought when I saw... Uh, saw Moonspawn was, I would love to see this on the big screen, but uh, yeah, I don't see how it could be possible. But yeah, Animander Rake, uh, I've already heard a lot of comparisons to Elric. Uh, I've already heard a lot of comparisons to uh, Witcher. Here's the deal uh, with that. Besides having like silvery or silvery hair, I don't really know if there's a comparison there. I haven't read Elric. I've only read a couple books of Witcher and I don't see any Geralt in, uh, in, in, in Animander Rake, except for, again, like I said, the silver hair. Uh, but uh, as far as Elric goes, I think everyone who's read Elric accuses everybody of stealing itself from Elric. So I, I don't know. If you're making me pick a favorite character right now, though, I feel like the book wants you to make Whiskey Jack your favorite character, but I don't feel like he's done a lot yet. Look, I know that his, his men would run through a wall for him. And I, 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 okay, great. He demands these guys respect, so therefore he demands the reader's respect. Uh, same with Dujek One Arm. Uh, everyone seriously respects this guy. I mean, they're, they're ready to fight a civil war if they have to in his defense. But uh, with, with, with me, I think so far with Whiskey Jack, is like he hasn't done much except tell everybody what to do. So uh, I think that's going to be developed over time. Obviously, that's one of the names I knew before I even started this series. So I know obviously he's a fan favorite. I'm trying not to let that change how I feel about characters. I like him. I just don't feel like he's done enough yet for me to say he's my favorite. If I had to pick a favorite character at this point in the book, it's got to be uh, Onos Tulan. Is that what we're saying? You're just going to call him Tool? 
awesome. I love this species. Now, another pronunciation is going to piss you guys off. I was saying Talon Imas. I think a lot of people are saying it's Talon Imas. Imas? I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I say Malazan, so I'm kind of using like the ah sound with my A's. So I'm going with a Talon Imas. I, I know an I and an E sound can get kind of confusing. But again, again, We'll see what happens here. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Atul is so much fun. Uh, I love the interactions with him and Lorne. It's one of those things where I expected him just to be like dark and broody and serious. But uh, he's actually got a little bit of a, a K, uh, is it K2SO from a, from a Rogue One or obviously HK-47 from Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Kind of makes me think of like how he talks like that droid about how he can be serious and give you all the information that you need. But he can crack a joke once in a while. And I think the humor is kind of underrated in this. I didn't expect that. I thought this was going to be so deathly serious that you weren't going to be seeing a lot of uh, joke cracking and things like that. But... Such a cool character. I never really thought uh, that a zombie skeleton kind of race was going to be something I'm interested in. It almost feels like uh, the the dead from uh, from from Lord of the Rings, you know, kind of like that, but with a little bit more a little bit more grace. But I've only seen one so far. But we're hearing a lot of backstory about the Talani Moss and the, is it the Jagut? Is it the Jag Hut? I don't know. I was saying Jagut. I don't I don't know just because it sounds cooler. Uh, haven't really seen one of those characters yet, but I, I, I'm kind of getting a sense that they're kind of like the elves and the dwarves, and they've kind of been warring for a long time. Uh, I don't know. Again, here's the thing. I try to understand all these info dumps, and I would go back and I would read it again, and then I'd just be like, Mike, you got to let this go, my man, because you're going to know later. Okay, so that has helped me a ton. I think that's why I'm really liking this. Another character I like is you take a great raven, and you make it not only talk, but you make it be able to shapeshift into a dog. Sign me up. I love Crone. It feels like something out of a John Gwynn book. I love this character. So, so cool. And the idea that maybe she is playing two sides is obviously very interesting. They keep telling me that Kaladin Brood and, and Anamanda Rake are allies, but her meeting with Kaladin Brood kind of sounds like, well, are we sure? I, I don't really know. I don't know. We're still finding all these lines. I've just seen Kaladin Brood once, and during that chapter, we got a, several other names. I'm like, okay, we're talking about like somebody named Sharp Lance, some prince and stuff. Uh, I don't know much about the Crimson Guard yet, but yeah, it's just so much information, but I'm loving it. It just feels like a living, breathing world, and I'm having a great time with it. Okay, here's the part where I don't want you guys to answer anything. These are some of my biggest questions forward so far. Now, look, I, like I said, I like that he's not giving you all the answers immediately. I like a good hook in fantasy, and knowing that he is going to answer these in due time is fine with me. I am compelled at this point, and I love that. I don't want to hear a giant info dump with a beginning, middle, and end to start a book like this. So just give me little, tiny, tiny little crumbs off the side of your table right now i'm here for it i'm i'm cool with it uh i think the biggest one i got right now is i want to know what whiskey jack did to get demoted is or was it was it his choice look i i know that him and dujack are very clearly part of what i'm calling the old guard of the malazan empire they were there before kelavet was overthrown but uh I don't know about Whiskey Jack because it looks like someone's trying to kill all the, the 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 bridge burners now, which is really weird since this is the ninth ninth year of uh, of Lacine's uh, Lacine Lacine's rule, and uh, I, I don't know why they decided to kill him off now because they you know were loyal to Kelved, but you know that's one of the great mysteries in this book. But uh, the fact that Lorne actually points out that Dujek One Arm is so so important that it doesn't matter if you know he's still loyal to the, the now uh, apparently dead. Uh, former emperor, uh, he's just too vital to what we do because it shows that he's like this master uh, war tactics master, master war tactics master. See what I did there? There's actually a word for this: master tactician at war. Uh, like she, she even tries to kind of like play the game, and she's like, "Look, I'm out of my element." So uh, I love when Tatrin's kind of like, "Um, oh, fuck that guy," and she's like, "No, fuck you. This guy is too important to us." Uh, but you know, it's that whole idea of there's this. Um, Maybe there's a little bit of civil war because there's a lot of people who are very, that are loyal to uh, to Kelevet and they're loyal to Dujek. But for like they keep talking about like 10,000 soldiers that are loyal to him over the Malazan, over Lacine's Malazan Empire, which I, I think Surly is a way better name than Lacine, but you know, Throne Master, you know, it's kind of neat. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think that there's definitely a little bit of civil war brewing. The Deck of Dragons. Big time over my head. I feel like I'm playing Advanced Dungeons and Dragons and I've never even played Monopoly before when they talk about this stuff. Another thing, like the info dumps about the uh, about the Jagut and the uh, and the Talani Moss where I'm just like, I'm just going to accept that I'll get this later. 
A lot of people have told me that the deck of dragons readings is something that would really make sense later. Uh, I, I love the uh, <laughs> the hairlock stuff with the little marionette. I don't know where that's going, but again, it's very, very creative. Uh, I've already gave up trying to understand Warrens. Uh, I know a lot of people that are obsessed with magic systems. A lot of Sanderson readers that have joined this read-along, and they're like obsessed with understanding the magic like right away. I was like, look, the characters don't even understand the magic sometimes. <laughs> Uh, that to me is, I'm treating it kind of like I did with Allomancy when I read Mistborn. With Allomancy, at first, you know, it had like your, your, your elemental table and it's telling you what everything does. And I was like following that whenever they fight. And after a while, I was just like, you know what? They're fighting. I'll just accept that. Same with the magic. Yeah, they're using magic. Cool. Cool. I like the fast travel element of it, but, uh, you know, I'm expecting to see a lot more. There was that big scene with, uh, with, uh, with, with Bellardin and Tattersail, where she used like numerous types of warrants, and I'm just like, I don't know what any of this means, but I assume it's like a giant nuclear missile just hit. So, yeah, more of that. I'm not ready to RIP Tattersail yet, by the way, uh, with that whole scene. You know, I know that, that Ganos found her, and Tak the Younger found like her, her and Belden's body, and you know, he's pissed off now. But I, I you did talk about, he does talk about the, uh, the, the, the bag of remains. That uh, that that Belden was carrying of of Nightshell, his lover, and carrying that bag of remains, and how she had kind of like I guess like preserved them or something with a spell before. But it just talked about soul shifting, like they did with Hairlock, and then he talks about seeing like uh, small bony childlike kind of footprints leaving the ashes. Now I don't know if Tattersail is like a, a, a walking shin bone or something right now. I don't know what's going on with that. If she's actually become the remains, like a reanimated version of Nightshell, I I don't know. But like I said, I I, I feel like. This is too popular of a character for him to have killed her off in the first 300 pages of book one. So I don't know if that's really playing into it or just it's a character I really like. And I hope to uh, not see the end of them already. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not ready to to rest in peace that one yet. Are the Marath bug people or are they just weirdos? They just like to cosplay as bugs. I don't really know that. I don't necessarily think that they're human. But I definitely don't think that they're bugs. I think they just kind of have like, you know, chitinous armor. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, kind of like in, like in Morrowind or something. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I, they're, they're very weird. There's like black and green and all this stuff. I, I don't know if that's just like their rankings. If that's just like a species. Uh, again, no clue. Because right now all I can see is is uh, Ender Wigan putting on the, uh, the the bug mask. And, you know, while his brother almost chokes him to death. That's all I'm kind of seeing right now. So <laughs> I don't know what's up with the Moranth, but uh, again, I don't know what's up with a lot of this stuff. Hey, what's an Ascendant? I mean, I think I know. I think I know. Uh, look, I know that we have like, I believe Elder Gods, uh, I think Karul, Kroll, I don't know how you say that. Uh, he's been talking to, to, to Kruppa. All right. I got in trouble because I said I said croup at first, and people were just like uh, just like offended that I said that I said croup. So I kind of moved to Kruppa, and other people were like, "No, it's just Krupp." So again, guys, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, he likes to talk about himself. Kruppa likes to talk about some Kruppa, don't he? But uh, you talking to this cruel character, and it's like, okay, so this is an elder god. So what I'm thinking is that an elder god is obviously established gods like actual like living on high type of gods like you know cussing at us from like mount olympus right uh where i feel like an ascended is someone maybe who has a human who has actually ascended to godhood but uh they talk about these gods kind of like they're not a, not really necessarily that they're not a big deal but that they can be killed like it's not a big deal to kill them you know i've killed like there's one one character in jerusalem who we haven't seen the name of yet it was like yeah i've killed a god before no big deal uh well i think he killed an ascendant before so i think that if you're an ascendant you're obviously vulnerable you can die just like any human but uh but a, a god is like you know, an elder god is just like something serious that's my guess right now uh i did i did look into the uh the glossary that he has here. And I noticed he did not have a term for ascendant. So I was like, I figured that's a read and find out there. Is Kruppa off his rocker? Or is he like extremely powerful? Because I want to think he's like this super mage, but he's having like all these weird dreams and stuff. And I'm like, so I figure he's like straight, just like Muad'Dib and he can be many places at once. He can see everything. You know, I don't know if it's like that or if he's just insane. I have no idea. There, there are parts of some of his dream sequences where I'm like... <laughs> Don't know what's going on right now. Uh, again, guys, I know it sounds like, well, did you get anything about this book? I think I'm getting a lot more than others are. Uh, there's just certain parts where I'm like, you know what? That doesn't that isn't crystal clear. I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. My last one is our Kellenbed Dancer and Dasim. Dasim? Dasim? Are they really dead? Because I don't really think so. I think at least two-thirds of this group is going to show up again. Uh, it, I'm thinking maybe my early guess would be Kellenbed actually 
is an ascendant. You know, after he died, he ascended to something else, maybe. And I definitely think we're having too many name drops about Dossum for him not to show back up. And then Dancer, I, I don't really know either way. I don't really have a an answer for these things. I just feel like you keep hearing about these these three people so much. And obviously, you would think the Emperor, you would hear about him a lot because he was overthrown. But uh, yeah, it's one of those things. I'm like, mm. did you see the body? You know, that's 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 my whole thing with with uh, anything you got sci-fi or fantasy. Nobody means you are not dead. So I think we'll be seeing them again. So uh, look, final thoughts here is like I just I keep telling myself not to stress about not understanding everything. I think that's helped me quite a bit. It's made it more enjoyable experience for me. I think it'll help you too. You're not going to understand the deck of dragons in your first read. You're not going to understand all this history between these warring clans. You're not going to understand a lot of these dream sequences, I think, with Kruppa. So, uh, again, just kind of roll with it. And I think that you're going to have a, a good time with it. Uh, like when I think of Belden and, and, and Tool both had huge info dumps about the Talani Moss and the, uh, and the Jagut. And I'm just like, it'll make sense in time. Just go with it, man. Just go with it. And I think that's maybe a lot happier while reading this book but look i'm so happy that this series so far just it feels so unique and fresh a lot of big fan popular fantasy series like this you'll read book one and you'll be like this is very derivative of something i've read before i feel like i've seen this before and everyone's like oh well that's just while they were getting their footing and then you know book two they did their own thing erickson goes for it immediately this doesn't feel like anything else i've ever read before it really doesn't. And I think that that's just so refreshing. And that's why I'm loving it. And look, guys, this is the quickest that I have become immersed in a new fantasy world since I first picked up Stormlight Archive back in, what, like 2016. Uh, and that's not meant as a shot to Wheel of Time. I know a lot of people be like, wait, what about Wheel of Time? Wheel of Time? I felt like I'd read that book before when I read Eye of the World. You know what I mean? This doesn't feel like anything I've ever read before. Whereas Stormlight definitely felt very original to me. So uh, that's a compliment all the way around. Uh, I'm having a really, really good time. I know it's early. I don't want to just go ahead and be like start celebrating and be like, hey, we picked a great series because I'm loving it to death. Uh, I, I do like all the feedback that I'm hearing from other people that they are enjoying it just as much as I am. And uh, you know, I don't want to go as far as to say, hey, I finally found a book that's similar to Dune, but so far, this is about the closest I've gotten to something that is similar to Dune, not only in structure, but in storytelling. So um, yeah, that's very, very encouraging stuff. Now, I don't want to crown it just yet. Like I said, I'm only halfway through it. But, uh, yeah, I didn't expect to be enjoying this as much as I have so far. So, guys, what do you think? Where are you at in the book? Again, please don't give any spoilers past the first three books in Gardens of the Moon. And uh, I'll make another one of these when I finish. And then, like I said, I'll be doing that kind of collaboration video with this card where we'll talk about the whole book and everything. And I hope you'll be able to leave me with a little more questions than I can probably lead you. So, again, like I said, I know this is all over the place. And I probably didn't talk about anything that actually happened here. Uh, just... Really, it's just, it's just how surprised I am at how much this is clicking with me. So I'm very excited to keep going. So guys, thanks for listening, and uh, I will talk to you in the comments.